Hey guys, welcome to Barbecue's Director's Cut Final Tutorial on Aerodrome Navigation, which will include understanding the Horizontal Situation Indicator, or HSI, this guy here, the Tachyon Radio Navigation System, and finally the Instrument Landing System, or ILS. I'll also go over a few concepts such as the glide slope and angle of attack which are relevant to this tutorial. Okay, my neck's starting to hurt already. I'm going to lower the seat a little bit. Man, who turned out the lights? That's a good thing we've got these instruments on board or we wouldn't be going anywhere. Let me lower the seat here. Ah, much better. Uh, to start off, we'll look at the HSI, which is the main instrument dedicated to navigation. The others being the compass, which would be up here. And I really am low here. And uh, the other being the ADI. The reason we're going to talk about the ADI is uh, because when we enable the ILS system, the, uh, the needles for the ILS system are these yellow ones here. There's one also one on the bottom that isn't appearing right now. So we'll discuss that as well. They all work together to give the pilot many options for navigation. Some rough and uh, others more precise. I also want to mention that I'll be using an analogy about the traffic patterns around the aerodrome. For those math majors out there, an analogy is just using something completely unrelated in a way, to get across a concept to a, a student or reader that they might relate to and so understand the concept that way. I live in Indianapolis, Indiana, and we have many interstates that go through the center of our, of, of our capital, Indianapolis, hence the nickname Crossroads of America. We also have an interstate that goes around the city of Indianapolis, 465. It's basically a circle around the city with various exit ramps to access different parts of the town. I'll be using this analogy throughout the tutorial. Also, it could be helpful to imagine an old old west wagon wheel with the spokes, the aerodrome being the center of the wagon wheel, and the spokes would be the radials. Every aerodrome has certain airways that are on these radials. Think of the spokes as the interstates that come through your nearest city. And think of the outer edge of the wheel, that is the circle, as the interstate, like 465 in Indianapolis, that goes around the city. Okay, so all of this is pretty general. You, you can use the tackling station and the HSI on these, quote, roads, and they will get you close to your destination. But they won't take you all the way to your front door. Enter ILS. Once you make it into the city, ILS is like making that final turn onto the road that you live on. We're talking fine precision here. Okay, enough with the literary metaphors and analogies and the like. We're hog drivers after all. Let's take a look at the primary instruments we'll be dealing with, first of which will be the HSI. HSI has a number of things going on. A, a compass rose, this circle here, which tells you your current heading at the top. It also has a course knob, which allows you to put in a desired course to a given nav, nav point, which is this knob here. Two RMI needles, which point to the current navigation point that is selected, depending on where they get their info from. And a course deviation indicator line. Here are the needles, by the way. This one's labeled, it's skinnier, and it's labeled number one. This needle is labeled number two, and it's, it's fatter. And then there's also a course deviation indicator line. This is the course line with this big fat arrow here. And this is part of that line, but it's, it's a deviation indicator. So the goal there would be if you want to arrive at a nav point from a certain uh, bearing, if you want to pick up a course to, to hit that nav point from, this needs to be lined up with this, this CDI needs to be lined up with this course line so that it forms one solid line and they would all be pointing directly up and you would be on that course to that nav point. So it's the middle part that you often see skewed to one side or the other on the CDI. There are also a few windows. One is the course setting described above. 
that you can input by changing this knob here. And the other one is uh, shows the range to the source by way of distance measuring equipment, or DME. That would be this window here. It's always a good idea to set the course knob to the runway heading at the beginning of a mission to ensure you've got the perfect exact course input. Wait until you're actually on the runway and line it up so that it points to the 12 o'clock position. So we can do that now. And we're at Kitaizi and the runway is called 8. So let's set it to 080 by scrolling up and see how close it gets. Okay, it looks like it's a, quite a bit off. So the runway isn't exactly 080, which happens a lot. They just round it up to the nearest tenth uh, degree. So it could be, you know, it's closer to 071, which I happen to know from experience. And so when you put it, line it perfectly up, it actually shows 062, but the tacking station which this needle, number one, is pointing to isn't exactly in the middle of the runway. It's like off over by the porta potties or something. So you kind of have to know from experience what it should look like when you're coming in for a landing. And that's about right. All right. So I mentioned that the two needles point to different sources. What are the sources? They can be a tachyon station, like we've been talking about, um, or a tachyon radio which could be in another aircraft, which would point you to that aircraft, like a tanker, for example. Um, and it's all based on what you designate using the tachyon channel selector on the panel back here. So if you move back here, you set this channel up for a particular airport or aircraft and put it to TR for transmit and receive. If you use aircraft, you, put it up, you have to put it on the AATR. But just for an airport, you put it on transmit and receive, and that's going to determine where needle number one is pointing. So, um, the other needle can be uh, the little fat one, number two. Often, I find, points to the uh, navigation point that you, uh, st the steer point you currently have selected that, from the flight plan that, it, that was loaded on the data cartridge. So, I have to stand up here. Uh, that would be number one here. So this mode panel here, if I choose instead of tacking steer point, I think you have to unselect tacking first. This is the default sort of when nothing's selected. It looks like this. You go to steer point here. Yeah, they both point to the steer point in question, and then it's starting to give us a range to that steer point. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We'll turn steer point off and tack in back on. Um, two is still pointing to that steer point, by the way. And one is pointing to the tack in station with a range of close to zero because we're at the airport. So you can have two of them going on at the same time. Uh, let's see here. The, the number one needle always seems to, to use the tack in as its source. Um, I can't say that for 100%, but in my experience, it always seems to be the default tacking in on a my needle. Um, if the station is transmitting and you have the correct channel input, it should point to it. Now for the ADI, uh, this shows the aircraft's current attitude. That is the, the flight control surfaces are causing the aircraft, for example, to be pitched up 5 degrees in a 30 degree left hand turn. The reason I include the ADI in this tutorial, as I said before, is because of the ILS indicators, which are these yellow uh, bars here, the one on the bottom you can't see yet. The ILS needles appear on the ADI, not the HSI. So the first part of your approach, you want to use this instrument to tack in, kind of rough in. You're just kind of coming in on the interstate into town. And then when you get up on your exit ramp, you go to the ADI to look at the ILS system to make that final turn onto the street that you live on, so to speak. Okay, so I've already input the correct frequencies into the TAC in and the ILS, but just a little review on that. Um, this knob here controls the first digit. This knob controls the second digit and the, the uh, 
letter, I think that the Ys are usually used for aircraft, and um, you right click on it to change to the other digit. So I can change that to, from X to Y and back. Right click it again, you can change the second digit. So 44X, that's us. And then on the ILS panel, you've got volume and uh, you have to right click and hold to change the volume or to change these two digits here, you just scroll it up and down and you need to be at 109.75. Okay. This knob here controls the first three digits back and forth. And you turn it, right click on this to turn it on so that the power, it's receiving power. Now, make sure that you hear an audio tone for both of these before you mute it. I've already muted it, but to mute it, an easy way is on the intercom uh, panel over here. You can see that I've depressed these two. If you pop it back open, both of them, you should start hearing some audio tones, which I'm not going to wait around to find out. There they are. Okay. So you just push them, left click on them, and it'll mute them. All right. So we've already also uh, set the course, sorry about that, of the runway. Hey guys, uh, I had to uh, had a little snafu with that last video and I've had to go to a different airport, but basically now that we've talked about all the instruments, um, I imagine you're just coming back from a, uh, a hop and you're uh, lining up on uh, the runway about 13 miles out. This is what I'm doing now, and um, you can see the ILS bar at the top of the ADI there. That's the glide slope one, and then the other one's going to be popping in here in a minute. I'm a little bit uh, to the left, uh, or rather, I'm to the right. I need to be, I need to move to the left a little bit to line up. Uh, you can see the course deviation indicator on the HSI that is telling me I need to do that. And then I'll, as it starts moving towards the center, I'll, I'll line up and probably be about 10 miles out. There goes the other ILS bar. Now I've got both of them, and it's also telling me I need to go to the left. Now just because the, uh, the top bar on the ADI is saying I'm too high, that's okay. You just keep, keep your altitude, and um, it will... Since it's an angle, it's like a, a ramp going from where you are down to the runway threshold. You know, you're going to, uh, that's just going to keep moving down as you get closer to the airport. But then once it, once it centers, you want to keep it centered. And um, so you'll have to uh, pitch the aircraft, or rather have an angle of attack that, that has you going down that ramp. So um, this actually turned out pretty bad. <laughs> But I decided to keep it because it shows you a common mistake, which is uh, uh, chasing these, these ILS indicators. Once they get into the center, you really want to, or, or you have to do a correction, you just want to maintain that one degree or two degree correction. Watch the bar go towards the center, don't follow it, and then once it gets to the center, then, then turn to it. Otherwise, you'll be chasing it back and forth all day long, which is sort of what I do in this example. Um, but you can see they're right about there. I mean, that's about perfect. I should have just kept it, and instead I went too far right and uh, trying to make up for it. It's hard to do that when you're looking at your speed, your angle of attack, um, your altitude, and then trying to mess with these bars. It's, it's pretty uh, task-intensive. Um, the angle of attack, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, um, on the left hand uh, side of the HUD, you see that green circle and the, the yellow carrot. And if you want it to be green, and that shows that your angle of attack is good. Um, angle of attack being the difference between where your aircraft is pointing, the nose of your aircraft, which is that circle on the top of the HUD with the dash lines, and where your aircraft is traveling, which is indicated by the, the flight path indicator in the middle of that little airplane you can think. Um, I think it's also called the total velocity vector. Um, so the angle between those two is your angle of attack. You just want to make sure that it shows up green and you'll be set to land. So you've got to keep your eye on a number of things. Um, at the 
same time, which is what makes this uh, difficult. But as you practice, which I haven't been doing, it, you know, you end up chasing bars left and right and getting way too slow on your speed. Um, and you can see that I just barely made it. <laughs> so uh, you make just small, small corrections because those needles are so sensitive. Just a little half degree correction and that, that those needles are just whipping back and forth. Um, so I need to go to the right now and um, I'm a little uh, high so I need to go a little lower and to do that you're supposed to use your you know, your throttle for, for altitude and your uh, pitch for speed when you're landing. And so I dropped off the, off the tower to get a little lower. And of course, though, your speed, there goes that outer marker at the end of one of the buildings. It's at three miles. It's got to be in there. And I left the audio tone on so you could hear that. If you mute the ILS, you're not going to hear that tone because it's important that you know, okay, you're getting really close. You need to make a, a go or no go decision altitude, at this point. Altitude. You need to check your altitude because you're getting really close. At this point, you know, I, I should have gone around. I should have, no way I should have kept going with those because I'm way off to the left. There goes the, the beacon again, and I'm not sure if that different tone is because I'm so far off or, or what, but um, I'm going to look into that. But I managed to pull it off by making a correction here. Um, I'm keeping my eye on the radar altimeter. One eye is always on that radar altimeter after that marker beacon. Because as you get to about 50 feet or 70 feet, you've got to get your head up out of the cockpit and see what's going on. So I can see a few things on the ground. I see where I'm at. I flare and go ahead and land. So Again, this is sort of an example of what not to do, but I think it, it will help explain some of the common errors on ILS navigation and um, help you understand the concept a little better, at least. So, see you next time.